Awesome. So again, welcome everybody to the UCLA School of Nursing, Fall 2023, BS Pre-Licensure Admissions Information Session. My name is Mark Coven. I am the Director of Recruitment, Outreach, and Admission. And so you'll see my dream team next to me. You have Natalie Asensio and Jamie Gama. And so uh, we are in the admissions office. Uh, we are part of the evaluations in terms of your applications, sending them through the process for faculty review and everything of that good nature. So uh, we're your first point of contact and we'll be the ones that will help you and assist you throughout your duration of the application process. So the purpose for today is to share with you all specific information regarding our Bachelor of Science in Nursing program, which is gonna be tailored for those that are in high school, that are seniors, as well as transfer students that typically will come from uh, the community college and are maybe a four-year university. Uh, this pre-licensure program is full-time, and what it does is at the end, once you graduate, you will be able to sit for the licensing exam uh, to be certified as a registered nurse, not only here in the state of California, but any other state here in the United States. Okay, so for today's agenda, I'll continue on with the introduction and the curriculum overview, and then Natalie's going to take over, and she's going to talk about the application process, um, and then we're going to have Leonie Thomas who is our director of financial aid. She's not here uh, or not gonna be able to join us today, but she has done a wonderful job of uh, putting together a uh, power, um, no, I'm sorry. Well, yes, a PowerPoint slide, but then also a recording. Uh, so that part, um, you guys will definitely be able to enjoy, uh, get an understanding in terms of how to apply for FAFSA, um, what it is, what it means, um, the tuition fees and the scholarships that we have as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish it up uh, with a panel of, of our current students, um, who are going to be talking a little bit about just their day in the life uh, in terms of being a nursing student, what made them apply, what they like about it, and all this good stuff. And then that's where we'll be able to open that up as well in terms of the Q&A to ask them any questions that you guys have. And then what we'll do is we'll finish up with the last 20 minutes or so to answer any questions that you guys have. All right, so hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy it. And so let's continue on. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing, and then I'm going to share another new clip. Um, and what it is, it's going to be a small about two, three minute video of our simulation lab. And so I think it's a really cool depiction of what you guys are going to see and or do once you guys are admitted into our program. And so what it does is um, it, we have real life mannequins in our sim lab um, that replicates really pretty much a hospital setting. Uh, for our students before they actually do their clinical rotations. And we think it's just a really great experience for them um, as they start to kind of move towards, you know, the clinical environment. Um, and so, yeah, what you'll see is the, the um, mannequins, they talk, they bleed, they give birth and everything of that nature. So let me do a new share and we will show you what that's about. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Hi. This Do you morning. have the discharge instructions? Yeah. yeah, we're just. I'm just going to pass off, and Nora's going to be taking care of the discharge instructions. I'll be the nurse yeah. taking care of you today. We're going to start an extra line on you. Here at UCLA School of Nursing, simulation is a very important piece of the training. It takes a student out of a lecture hall and puts them more into a clinical setting. We have mannequins that have ability to mimic a lot of different patient aspects. They're able to breathe, their chest rises, they have coughing, wheezing, lung sounds, crackles. A lot of the higher tech mannequins actually sweat. We can change their pupil sizes and by computer we also can change any vital sign similar to a real patient. It's a way to get the students more engaged and to get those clinical experiences uh, such that they don't have to actually practice on real patients. ICU simulations are to mimic the environment in an ICU to add some extra stress, to add some extra equipment that the nurses have now been trained on, and then depict some kind of event that would be typical for an ICU and see how they can react to that event and intervene to make the patient better. There's a lot of instances where things happen right away, you have to respond right away. It's been able to help me practice my emotions, help me practice how I deal with things. What's great about simulation is that the student actually gets immersed into a situation. When they get to the ICU environment, it's not foreign to them. The leadership simulation that we do is done for senior students who are nearing graduation. We have five patient beds with mannequins simulating an actual 
clinical floor. You come in and your nurse will give you maybe like a fast report. They have to go somewhere. He's a 60 year old male that was admitted several days ago for an exacerbation of his asthma. You go to your patient rounds and you go, first patient, okay, you check on them. How are you feeling? Are you like dizzy? Yeah. But then you hear like a bell from another, another room. Okay, I'll let her know. I'll be quick, okay. The goal is to give them a little bit of stress because we want them to be able to think as a nurse and to be able to think on their feet. So Mr. Salter, you're having um, very low blood pressures. It can certainly be that chaotic during the day and that's why we have this for practice to put us in those situations so we can learn how to think, what to do. After each of the simulations, it's really important to come together and have a debriefing. The whole point of the debriefing really is for them to reflect on what they were thinking when they did different things, and then if they would do anything different, how would they do it different? It's really helped us um, boost our confidence and also helped apply everything we learned in the books to what we see in the real world. The goal of simulation here at UCLA is to send students out into the clinical world more prepared and better able to tackle some of the more difficult types of cases that they're going to come upon. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think what it does is it really does give a good understanding um, in terms of, you know, what the day in the life is of a nursing student uh, within our skills lab and, the, and, you know, the understanding of what it takes before they matriculate and move forward. So let's see, let's continue on. So uh, again, this Bachelor of Science program is designed for high school and transfer students who wish to enter the nursing profession and wanna do that through here at the UCLA School of Nursing. Uh, this is again, like I was stating, a full-time program. And so for those that are gonna be entering as freshmen, it's gonna be a four-year full-time program. And so this includes your first two years, which are pretty much completing your general education courses. And then the last two years where it's mostly going to be just specifically your nursing classes. Um, if you're thinking about transferring in, uh, we have a three-year program. We are also in the talks of also providing a two-year program for transfer students. So I believe for this upcoming fall, uh, or we should say fall 2023. Uh, for those that transfer in, you should have the opportunity of completing it within two or three years. Um, but as of now, we're going to talk a little bit more of it being a three-year program, and you'll be able to see a sample course sequence within that as well. Um, so with that, just in case you guys do not know, UCLA is on the quarter system, and so each quarter is about 10 weeks. And so again, if you're thinking about how many quarters is it going to take for me to graduate, it's going to be a total of 14 for those that enter as freshmen, and then it's going to be a total of 10 quarters for those that enter as transfers. And so really fast in terms of like what that means and how that works um, is that we uh, will have you guys start your first year with the fall quarter, spring quarter, um, I'm sorry, winter quarter, then spring, and then that will uh, conclude your first year. Um, and then you'll start year two again with fall, winter, and spring, and so forth. But that last bullet here that you see is probably the one that you guys are most interested in. Um, and so our goal is to bring in uh, 50 freshmen per year. And you'll see it says 10 transfers per year, but we just received um, a grant um, to where we're able to fund more transfer students. So this upcoming year, we're going to be able to bring in 20 plus transfer students. Um, and so that is something that we are actually really excited about. Okay, so a lot of people ask uh, why UCLA? Um, and so um, I love to use this example because I think what it does is it gives a really good, clear um, kind of view in terms of why we think you should choose UCLA. Uh, one is that UCLA is a small community within the big city limits of Los Angeles. And so with that, we have our own police department, we have our own transportation line, we have our own hospital, uh, which is Ronald Reagan Medical Center, which is the number one hospital on the West Coast, just in case you didn't know. Um, in, um, in the village um, or outside, we have entertainment, places to eat, places to shop. So we pretty much have it all for you guys. Um, and I think UCLA does a really good job of making sure that you guys don't have to go outside to get whatever it is that you need. But at the same time, in the School of Nursing, we think we provide the same resources um, within UCLA as the university. And so just some of the things that we do in terms of the resources that we offer um, is our own student service coordinator. Uh, we have, you guys will have your own faculty advisor. Um, you'll have a specialty coach, which are individuals that have gone through the program and have come back um, to help lend, you know, a hand to make sure that you're successful. We also have a mentorship program, which I think is really cool. What we do is we like to match up a first year student uh, with a second year. 
and you guys, you know, kind of move along throughout the program. Uh, your mentor is going to give you some ins and outs, you know, um, how to study for this class, maybe pass down some scrubs, uh, whatever it is, you know, they're there for you. So along with that, I know I mentioned Leonie Thomas, who is our director of financial aid. That's one thing that a lot of other majors and departments that they don't have is that their own financial aid resource. And so I think that is something that's really cool, um, knowing that you're not going to have to go to upper campus right, and wait in line or grab a ticket and speak to someone that really doesn't know you besides just looking at your student profile. Uh, we have that all here for you. So along with that, we have other resources. We do believe this is what makes, you know, our program, you know, one of the most sought out. And I think that's another reason why UCLA um, is ranked as one of the um, top nursing schools in the country. Um, and that is by the U.S. Uh, News and World Reports. So some of the goals of the program um, are going to be to educate and provide a new workforce of RNs. So, of course, um, what that entails is we want to make sure that um, all of you guys are going to be graduating, that you're going to be clinical leaders in a healthcare setting. Um, and so with that, we want to make sure that our graduates are going to be well prepared to deal um, in a high tech and high acuity setting. And the reason um, we want to do that is because we also have partnerships within our hospitals that we're affiliated with. And so here are just some that you'll see here, but it's not limited to, right? So what we always like to say is that we'll send our students down the 405 South um, and back up the 405 North. Um, if you're thinking Torrance Memorial, all the way back up to um, Dignity Health in Northridge and anywhere in between, right? So of course, um, if you have an interest in doing your research, I'm sorry, not research, well, you can do research, but if you're thinking about doing your clinical experience um, in the VA, we have that. If you're thinking about Cedars, Sinai, we can do that as well. Of course, UCLA Health, which is Ronald Reagan, as well as Santa Monica, um, Good Samaritan, St. John, CHLA, Mattel, Kaiser, and so forth. Um, and the reason why, again, why we want to do that is because you may have an interest of, yeah, I want to go, you know, to Ronald Reagan because I know it's the number one hospital, but um, if you are thinking, you know, you want to work with veterans, you know, there's probably a better hospital to do that. Or if you want to work in pediatrics, uh, we could send you to a rotation in CHLA, right, which is a children's hospital in Los Angeles um, and so forth. So we want to make sure that you're going to be able to dive in um, within these different hospitals, these different floors. Um, so by the time you do graduate, you really get a good hunch if you want to stay in the Los Angeles area where that can happen. Okay, so in terms of a, a, so connect, keeping a connection to the School of Nursing, uh, we have a student life, right? So we have tons of student organizations uh, that our current students belong to. Um, and so here are just a list of, of, of a few. Well, I say a few, there's probably 10, but there's still a lot more uh, that we have. Um, and so uh, you'll see what those are on the left. Uh, we have Broad Spectrum, which is for our LBGTQ uh, plus IA. We have Men in Nursing, Wellness in Nursing, uh, we have Lanza, Panza, we have Global Action in Nursing. So GAIN um, is one of our student organizations where students are able to go abroad um, if it is during the winter break, spring break, uh, summer break, whatever the case is, where they're dedicated about, you know, seven to 10 days of their time working in underserved communities in different parts of the world. Um, and so it's a really good way for them to, you know, use the things that they've been learning the skills lab and their clinical rotations and applying those uh, to different people and communities. And so I say that to say it's a little bit different, right? So when I said abroad, it's, it's not as if you're going to spend, you know, a quarter or two in another country. Unfortunately, within our program, you're not able to do that. Uh, but what we want to do is still provide you, you know, that access and that opportunity, though, to still be able to do it, but just on a smaller scale. And so you'll just see some of the logos that we do have here. Um, kind of towards the middle to bottom right. Um, and so um, keeping with that, we also want to say that we want to, that we always kind of keep a personal connection um, in terms of what's going on in society, knowing that you guys are going to be coming in in a, in a kind of a small cohort um, that we have classes um, that speak to what's going on in, in our everyday lives, right? And so one of the first two courses that you will be taking as a nursing student um, is going to be N10 and N20, uh, which has a social justice aspect. Uh, who we have, you know, great professors who um, teach that. Um, and I think what it does is it it, it puts together nursing um, together with what's going on in, in today's society. Uh, we also want you guys to know that we meet uh, with you guys quarterly. And when I say meet, I'm speaking about my team in the Student Affairs Office. Um, her name is Janet Kang. And so she does a really good job 
of working with our students to make sure that you guys are progressing, doing well. Um, if there's any issues or comments or anything that you need, um, she's there or we're there for you to help you as well. So here's just a few things that we like to do in terms of making sure that you guys are immersing yourselves uh, within um, the nursing program, right? Because again, as you remember, especially if you're thinking about coming in as a freshman, um, you're going to be taking more GEs. Whereas if you're going to be transferring in, um, you're pretty much going to be almost from the beginning jumping in into the nursing program. But either way, all these connections stay the same. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the curriculum um, and the overview of it. And so in terms of clinical experience, um, what you guys will be seeing here again is uh, if you're gonna be entering as a freshman, that starts year three. And then if you enter as a transfer within this three-year program, that starts year two, right? So again, um, let's say you, it, it's clinical experience time. And so for that first year that it's time to take uh, or do your first rotation, for the fall quarters, it's going to be MedSearch A. And then from winter and spring is where you can continue on to do MedSearch B and C. Uh, and then there is actually a summer session. So there's only one se summer that you'll have to, to come in. And that's going to be between basically uh, your second to last year to your last year before you graduate. And during that summer, you're going to be doing uh, peds and maternity. Uh, so that's always fun uh, being able to you know help uh, new mothers uh, with the birth of their, of their children. Um, and so, yeah, that's always a pretty fun experience for, for our students. Then you're going to start your last year uh, for fall quarter, and you're going to have a rotation in mental health. And then winter quarter, you're going to have critical care and public health. Uh, so again, you've been kind of hearing me throughout the word community, community, community. And so that it is something that we are really invested in. Um, and so there is going to be a public health aspect to where our students will be able to do different rotations in that. And then what you'll end up doing is that you'll finish up your spring quarter. Um, of your nursing career, and you're going to be doing what's called immersion, right? So immersion is where at this point, there's actually going to be no more classroom work um, that's going to be required of you. But instead, at this time, you're going to be able to pick a uh, hospital um, of your liking, and you will be able to uh, pick hopefully that floor that you would want to select as well. And what you do is uh, what we'll do is we'll match up with the preceptor who is a nurse um, who uh, might not be the same preceptor, but as you've been doing your rotations, it's going to be a nurse who's someone who's kind of, you know, working side by side with you as you're doing your different rotations um, and you, uh, as you're immersing yourself with the, with the um, patients and families, right? And so with that, uh, you'll be doing eight, 10 or 12 hour shifts, and you're really going to be immersing yourself in terms of like what it's going to feel like to be an actual nurse once you graduate. Um, but along with that, there's going to be a project that's involved. And so with that project, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look again on that floor where you're gonna be potentially working and you're gonna implement something that you feel would help you know, that floor uh, succeed. And so at the end, you present it um, and you know, majority of the times uh, the floor ends up taking that on. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a way for you to leave you know, something valuable to that floor, even if you do end up getting a position somewhere else. Okay, so what you'll see here, um, it's probably pretty small. It's small on my end, so it might be small on yours. Uh, but what we wanted to do is kind of fit this in uh, so you can kind of see in terms of a sample course sequence of what it's going to be like to be a student. Also with that um, in mind, that same link that you guys uh, uh, jumped onto to RSVP to today's session, if you scroll down, you'll see an information packet. And if you click on that link, it will have the sample course sequence in there too. So don't be alarmed if this does look small, you'll be able to still uh, retrieve that if you go back to that same site. Um, but what we wanted to do is kind of show you um, in terms of this set curriculum, right? Which is gonna be a little bit different maybe from you know, some older friends or older siblings who are like, yeah, you can go to college and you can take classes whenever you want. You know, you don't have to wake up until noon and your first class is at one, right? Like it's a little bit different with us. Uh, where our, our classes are pretty much set. And so um, you'll know what you'll be having to take from quarter to quarter. And so what you'll see here is the ones that are uh, in bold, so like the darker color that say in next to it, those are gonna be your actual nursing uh, courses that you'll be taking here uh, in the School of Nursing. The other ones are gonna be your GEs, okay? So as you see, even throughout the first two years, we're still keeping you involved within the nursing program, even though you're gonna be taking your GEs. Whereas year three and year four, um, that's where you're totally going to be jumping in um, into uh, the nursing 
I don't want to say program because you're already in the program, but all the nursing courses. So if we just go through probably the first, we'll go through the first two years, fall quarter, that's N10, right, social justice. And then you're going to be taking chemistry 14A, uh, which is the first part of the chemistry series. Math 3A is considered calculus. And then there's English uh, one or slash writing. And then what you do is you move on to winter quarter of your first year and you do in 20, which is the second part of the social justice course. And then you'll do chemistry 14B, which is the second chemistry course, portion of the course or series, I should say. And then you're gonna take life science 7A, which is a biology course. And then you're gonna take a liberal arts GE. You'll finish up your first year with spring doing in 13, which is human anatomy, finishing up the last series of chemistry 14C. Um, and then you're also gonna be doing uh, communications 100. As you start year two, N50 is epidemiology, and then you complete, you're going to complete the, the, the last life sciences, I should say, course that we require for you to take, which is 7C, and then there's going to be psychology. Winter, which is N3, which is the human physiology. NING10, which is microbiology, and then you're going to finish that winter quarter with biostatistics. Um, and then you see spring, we start kind of doing a little bit more uh, nursing courses at you uh, while you're also completing your GEs. Okay, so take a look at that. And that's what it's gonna look like for those that are gonna be coming in as freshmen. For those that are uh, thinking about transferring in and wanna come in as transfers, um, it's almost the same layout, but it is a little bit different in terms of you coming in um, as a uh, transfer within the three-year program. So most of the transfers will, well, not most, all of tr incoming transfers will have to complete their GEs, what we, which is what we call IGETSI. Um, but with that, there's about four prerequisites that you can hold off on taking and you can complete them while you're in our program. Um, and so what you'll see here within that first year is going to be Math 3A again, which is calculus. Um, and then there's psychology. And then if you go to winter quarter, you'll see which is microbiology and then communications. So those are going to be the four prerequisites that you can take uh, while you're in your first year. And then as you go to spring of your first year, then you'll have some electives. So depending on if you've completed uh, calculus, psychology, microbiology, and communications, along with the two extra electives, you do have the opportunity of minoring um, in another subject or another major, okay? So some people do take advantage of that and that's pretty cool. So um, if you have an interest in psychology or another foreign language, whatever the case is, you do have that opportunity of doing this here. Then as you see for year two and year three, you're jumping fully in uh, into the nursing coursework. And so again, this is also, uh, this simple course sequence is also in our informational packet as well. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, requirements for transfer applicants. And so for transfer students, you're gonna to have to complete again, like I was saying before, which is gonna be your IGETSI, which is gonna be your general education courses. So it's gonna be about 60 units worth. But along with that, we're also gonna ask for you to complete these prerequisites that we require here in the School of Nursing. Okay, so uh, in no particular order, you're gonna to have to complete chemistry, which is about three semesters worth. And it's basically gonna be with uh, organic and inorganic courses. Okay, then you're gonna have human anatomy, a separate human anatomy course, separate human physiology course. And then as you uh, saw me say a little bit earlier for the life science, which is 7A and 7C, it's gonna be the equivalent of cell and molecular biology and physiology and human biology. Now, again, there's the four remaining courses that may be completed at UCLA if you like, um, and or you can complete them before you transfer in. So again, it, it doesn't um, hold any weight in terms of uh, impacting your admissions uh, uh, positively or negatively if you have these done or not. All it pretty much does is that it will open up the opportunity of uh, minoring in another, another major. So again, those four are calculus, communications, which is basically a public speaking, uh, intro to psychology, and microbiology. So if we talk about time commitment, um, UCLA says, hey, we, we have it all worked out. We have it sorted out for you. If for each unit that you take, if you dedicate at least three hours, if that's inside or outside of the classroom, you should be a successful student, right? So what do they say? So let's say if you're taking about 14 units 
um, they say you should devote at least, so a minimum of 42 hours, right, of studying. Now, again, you guys pretty much know your study habits, but again, as you're entering UCLA, you know, it's a whole, kind of a whole nother level, a whole nother beast is what I like to say. And so um, what you're doing now for you to be successful, you may want to double that, right? Times that by two um, and just making sure that um, your study habits and what you're doing, if it's individual in groups or whatever the case is, uh, that you're going to do whatever it takes to be successful. Okay. So it takes time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause really fast before Natalie joins us. Um, we want to see if you guys have any questions. Uh, feel free to put that in the Q&A and we'll spend a little bit of time uh, maybe answering some questions that you guys have. So um, feel free to put those in the Q&A here. And I see off the bat, someone has asked a question. How does UCLA's program compare to the Cal State programs? Um, well, in terms of uh, like curriculum, uh, we are more of a science-based um, nursing program. So as you probably kind of saw within those, uh, those coursework, um, there's a lot of sciences, right? A lot of math. So that is something that I do that sets us apart uh, from the Cal States. Um, and then along with that, if you're just thinking about like, what does our program offer, you know, that other programs don't, is the, you know, partnerships with the hospitals, the magnet hospitals uh, that we send our students to, the teaching hospitals that we send our students to, um, right? As I've, you know, been saying over and over again, Ronald Reagan being the number one hospital, that is something that most Cal States do not have, or they're not afforded that same opportunity. So you want to make sure that you're getting, being, or that you're being taught you know, not only in the classroom, you know, with, you know, the top faculty that we have here in the state and in the country, but also um, within a hospital clinical setting. So definitely just want to mention that. Someone is asking, are there prerequisites as a high school senior to complete? That's a good question. So no, there's no prerequisites in terms of like saying, hey, I need to complete a human anatomy or human physiology course. Uh, no, all you have to do is complete your A through G requirements. Um, which is required for you to, you know, graduate and complete high school. Um, now, if you're thinking about, hey, what classes maybe should I be taking that would help prepare me um, to enter the nursing program? Again, I would say uh, math and sciences. So if your school offers math and sciences or even APs, I would recommend doing that um, as well. Okay, let's see. Okay, so someone is asking, hey, I'm a little confused about the life science and the bioscience uh, uh, for physiology. Do we need to take, or do we need to have two different physiology courses to be taken as a transfer? So no. Um, so if you're talking about the life science, which is 7A and 7C, 7A is cell and molecular biology. So there's a course typically at your community college, which will satisfy that depending on where you go. And then the second part, which is 7C, is just physiology um, and human biology. So it's a little bit different from thinking just human physiology because you're doing physiology and biology at the same time. So they are two separate courses. Uh, what I would do is I would go on to assist.org, um, put in their current school if you're at a community college here in California, put that in, um, and then it will tell you the equivalent. Oh, here's a good question. Do nursing students get paid for their clinical years? No, they do not. So you have to remember, uh, you have to complete your clinical rot rotations and your hours in order to uh, graduate one and be eligible to sit for the NCLEX exam to receive your RN license in any state. So it is a requirement by the Board of Register Nursing. Okay. Someone is asking a question about volunteering. I know Natalie will talk a little bit about that. So we're going to skip that for now. Um, okay. If a senior takes an AP calculus BC class, uh, can that be transferred in? Yes, it can. It just depends on what your score is. Typically for calculus and AP, you're going to have to score a five. So no, no three, no four. It's going to have to be a five. Um, let's see. Okay. Good questions. Okay, so someone, some people are asking some questions, but it's literally going to be next for the application process. So I'm going to wait on that. Um, okay, so someone is asking, what is the difference between a BSN and BS pre licensure? And so, yeah, I can see how that probably can trip you up. 
Um, and so BSN programs are all pre-licensed. Well, sorry, let me, let me not say that. If you are entering a BSN program without your RN license, it's going to be pre-licensed. So pre-licensed means pre before you receive the license. So for individuals that are entering a BSN program without having the RN, they're going to complete the pre-license. Now, let's say you graduate with your BSN and you want to further your education and get a master's or a doctorate, then you're considered post-licensure, right? Because now you already have your RN, so it's post. Um, and so we like to consider our program BS pre-licensure because you're coming in without it. There could be instances where you go to, let's say, a community college to receive your associate degree in nursing, and then you're able to get your RN license that way. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a program for you to transfer in because ours is pre. You would then be considered post licensure with an associate degree. So then you would have to look for another university, typically a Cal State, uh, which would have what's called an RN to BSN program. So hopefully that made a little sense for you there. And so let's see. Someone is asking, um, regarding the 60, 70 units required to transfer, does that mean when we apply, we must only have within 70 units? And so that's a good question. No. Basically, what it's saying is that if you have over 70 units, the university will only accept 70 of them. Okay. So if you've completed 80 or 90, they're not going to be able to, to take in or accept all of those. So they're going to take in basically what is required for you to complete your GEs and the nursing prerequisites. Aha, uh -huh. someone is asking, can chemistry be taken concurrently within the program? So unfortunately not. The only four is going to be calculus, communications, psychology, and microbiology. Okay, so what we'll do, um, is we're going to continue answering these questions, um, but I just want to move it forward and have uh, Natalie talk about the application process. So without further ado, take it away. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Natalie Asensio and I'll be going over the application process. So on your right here, you can see uh, where to find the application for undergraduate admissions and it's at apply.universityofcalifornia.edu. And then, um, so we require the UC application, but we also have a supplemental application for our School of Nursing. Uh, some of the information that we will need from you will be your name, address, email, date of birth, high school, your resume, which is your work and volunteer experience, statement of purpose, recommendation forms, and here you see the deadline. So the UC application is November 30th, which is coming up. and. Um, the supplemental application deadline is January 15th, 2023. Your statement of purpose. Um, so this will be the clear statement of your goals. And here are a few things that reviewers look for. Uh, you may want to be a nurse really bad, but you need to write from your heart and put it on paper um, and have more than one person look at it. Um, your self-assessment for success. Um, why would you be a good fit for the university and in nursing, your goals for a nursing career? Uh, we wanna know if you have a goal and even we know sometimes those, uh, those goals can change. So just, a, just an idea of what that might be. Um, any multicultural experiences, um, you can include examples, anything with diversity or um, if you're bilingual and those abilities, how you've used them or what level that may be. Um, examples of responding to challenges or adversity if you're a first generation or the first person in your family to attend college and overcoming any specific hardships. Um, accomplishments, uh, make sure that you include those in your resume and any leadership activities or qualities that you may have. And this will be two to three pages double spaced. Letters of recommendation, we will need a total of two. Uh, two references are required, um, and that may be a teacher, counselor, and or a supervisor. Um, and it must be a professional person who uh, knows you and your work ethic. So this could be a supervisor um, at work, um, a professor, or a mentor uh, relationship, um, but no family and no personal friends. And the deadline for those letters of recommendation is uh, January 25th, 2023. 
Awesome. And then let me just interject really fast. And so uh, a lot of people think, hey, let me just ask two recommenders to write me a letter. Um, it, it is a little bit different. So as you're going on to the supplemental application, um, you're going to enter your, your recommender's name and then their email address. Um, and then uh, once you submit the application, they'll receive that link to complete it. Um, and so with that link, they'll click on it. And it's not just, you know, a page that opens up that says, hey, all right, now upload, you know, your written letter. It's an actual grid form. Um, and so in that, we're going to ask them specific questions uh, to where they'll be able to just do check marks, right? So, you know, a question could be, um, how is this individual's uh, leadership, you know, ability or traits? Um, and then the recommender will say, you know, this person is excellent, outstanding. Um, you know, there's an, there is a average, below average, um, and even like, hey, I, I, I can't answer this. I don't really know, right? And so there's, there's these you know, four or five different marks that they'll be able to check off. Another one would be, how's your leadership um, experience? Wait, if I already said that, uh, leadership. Another way would be, um, how, like, how well do you think this person would do? you know, in the program and so forth. So there's just about di different questions in there um, that they'll be asking. And so your recommender has to complete that form. And then yes, there, there actually is a part where they'll be able to upload a letter, okay? We, we have found that uh, recommenders are like, hey, yeah, your, your grid form is fine, um, but there's more that I wanna write, you know, about, you know, this potential student or, you know, my student or my employee or whatever the case is. And so just so you know, um, it's a little bit different. It's not just something that's written, but that's something that they'll have to complete. And so, I, yeah, go ahead, Jamie. Okay. I wanted to add... I wanted to add on to that. Um, you really want to let your recommenders know that you're applying to a nursing program and specifically UCLA. Oftentimes they have general letters that they provide for people. So you really want to let them know that you're applying to our nursing program so they can you know, write about that in your uh, letter recommendation. Totally. You're hundred percent right. Because like what people will do is, is they'll ask their teacher or the cases, Hey, can you write me a letter recommendation? And, you know, they'll say, sure. And then once they get it, it'll say, yeah, it's coming from UCLA School of Nursing. And that recommender might be like, oh, I had no idea, <laughs> you know, you wanted to do nursing, right? And so like Natalie was saying is make sure you reach out to them and say, hey, you know, nursing is what I've been wanting to do um, for a while. And or maybe because you have built that relationship with this recommender, they already know that this is the profession you want to, you know, you want to enter. So they would be able to write you a great one. Um, one last thing before you continue, Natalie, is yeah. you guys saw that deadline, right? So she said January 25th, right? So there's there's some there's a, there's a few deadlines that you guys are going to have to remember, right? That mm -hmm. first one is at UC, which is November 30th, and then to submit the the School of Nursing supplemental application that is due January 15th. But the reason why we have an extended deadline for the recommendations is because it's not until you submit your supplemental application that your recommenders will receive that link. So if you wait until January 15th to uh, submit your application, that's fine, but your recommenders won't receive that link until then. So what we want to do is give individuals an extra 10 days to submit. Now, let's say if you submit your application January 2nd, cool, it's early. That means your recommenders have a little bit more time to complete. Okay, so that's pretty much all it means. The earlier you submit it, the more time your recommenders will have. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to submit it on time because what we want to do or early, I should say, you want to submit it on time. It doesn't mean you have to submit it early, uh, but we still give your recommenders about 10 days. Right. And we do have some holidays coming up. So you want to make sure that you put these deadlines on your phone as a reminder, um, you know, write it down somewhere. You'll see it um, because it comes, it comes by very quickly. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so um, now I'm moving on to the work and volunteer experience. So your resume, um, it should highlight your work experience, volunteer work and or extracurricular activities. So make sure you put everything on there. Um, we need dates of activities with a brief description and a limit of two pages in chronological order beginning with the most recent. Oh, and um, uh, one thing with that, Natalie, tell them that like, hey, um, if they, oh gosh, I, I lost my train of thought because I was looking at a question. Um, forget it. It'll come back to me. That's what happens okay. when you try to multitask and do two things. I'm sure it'll, it'll come back around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. 
All right, so um, here, um, so we will be processing your applications, uh, Mark, Jamie, and I, and here are our emails. Um, so if you have any questions, um, make sure you take a screenshot of this or write these down. And then um, I'll go ahead and finish this up, uh, Natalie, thank you. And so um, this kind of pretty much concludes the application process. Um, with that. And so what we basically want to say is that this is a competitive applicant pool. Um, and what we do is we try to do our best to ensure that we're providing you with all the information that we think is important for you guys to be a successful applicant. Um, and now with that, some people were asking, um, you know, like, hey, what does a typical admitted student look like? Or like, what do I need to do, you know, in order to get in all that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit of, about that. Um, and so I think the beauty about our program is that uh, there is no particular student, okay? So that's the main thing. So a lot of people are like, hey, all right, just tell me what it is that I need to do and I'll do it in order to get in. The thing about our program is that's, that's, that's just not how it works, right? And so the reason why I say that is because all of our students come from different backgrounds, right? And I'm not even talking about, you know, from where they grew up um, demographically, um, or you know uh, who they are as gender, ethnicity, all that sort of stuff. Like that means that is also there. We're a very diverse program, um, but they also come in with different experiences, right? So we're gonna have people who um, have gained experience through you know life experiences, um, people who have healthcare experience because they volunteered. They've worked, they've become an EMT or a CNA or an LVN. Um, they've done a mission trip before, they've shadowed. We get people who come from all different backgrounds, people who have you know, research interests in nursing. Um, we, we have it all to the point where in that, in that statement of purpose that Natalie was alluding to, we want you to talk about and provide us a clear explanation of why you think this is the, pro the program and the profession that you want, right? So I, I know everyone out here who's attending today, has taken the time, right? You're taking the time out of your day to sit here and learn a little bit more. Um, and so I already know you guys have that passion, but we want you guys to be able to articulate that and put that down in the app, right? And so again, uh, you have your reasons for wanting to be a nurse, right? Now, what have you done, I guess, in the meantime, or what are you doing concurrently that is helping you push that, right? That, that passion, that excitement towards it. And that can be, um, you know, for X, Y, and Z. Okay, and so it's really about what you what, what do you want to do as a nurse, what you've been doing to get there, and how you're being able to express it. Um, one thing that's on my mind in terms of the statement of purpose is you saw kind of like those bullet points when Natalie was talking about, but that doesn't mean um, you have to answer them in that order. Be creative in your statement of purpose, right? Um, and so if I'm able to go back, um, here we go. Be creative. Um, and how you write this essay, you have three pages. Um, and so, you know, paint a picture um, in terms of letting us know why we think we should admit you. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing. Another thing is we wanna admit, you know, the best, the brightest, the go-getters and all that sort of stuff. So um, make it so, you know, we can also um, make sure that we're choosing the best um, as well. I was gonna add, uh, Mark, since we don't have an interview, think of it as, um, you know, you're making it very personal and letting us, you know, know who you are <laughs> because we don't do interviews. So, you know, that is, it's, it's, it's critical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that is, that's very important. And I'm like, there's a question here that I've seen someone um, has just opposed um, in the Q and A and they're saying, can I write my statement of purpose on a specific floor that I really enjoy while volunteering? Heck yeah. Yeah, if you were able to get that type of experience and you feel that's really been something that's pushed you towards, you know, wanting to uh, further this and get into the nursing program, yeah, talk about it. Um, if you remember that feeling of walking in or, or that conversation you may have had with a patient or that nurse, whatever the case is, talk about that and talk about how that has helped you, you know, want to continue on. Um, so that's, that's very important as well. Um, Someone also asked about like GPA. Um, and so uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. And so for those that are that are applying for freshman admission, um, there is no minimum GPA requirement, um, okay? Our transfers, we do have a minimum GPA requirement. That is actually a 3.5. 
Okay, and that will be based off your uh, your GEs and the nursing prerequisites. So basically anything that is UC transferable, we will calculate to ensure that it's a 3.5. Um, but for a freshman admission, again, there is no GPA that is required of you. Now, if we want to start talking about averages, because I know people are like, hey, I know, but you know, what does it take, you know, right to get in? The typically the um, the average of students that we admit into our uh, freshman program is about a 4.2, okay? So obviously that's weighted. Um, and for transfers, it's about 3.8 or so, okay? So those are just pretty much averages uh, that are out there. I think the good thing about both uh, entering programs or freshman or transfers is that we don't require um, any testing, right? So there's no entrance exams, right? The UC, uh, UCLA has done away with the SAT, ACT, you know, uh, standardized testing requirements. And I just saw another question here, which I was just getting ready to get to. So thank you for saying that, is that for our transfers, we don't require the TEAS exam either. Um, so TEAS is not required. So it doesn't matter if you're applying for freshman or transfer admission, um, testing is not required. Okay. Um, so let's, um, oh, gonna skip that. And so um, if you guys have any questions, we're gonna probably spend the next, spend the next five minutes or so um, answering some questions. And then what I wanna do is um, I want to move you guys over to Leonie Thomas who has her recording to talk about the financial aid. So feel free to put your questions here in the Q&A and we'll spend the next few minutes answering those for you. Don't be shy. Ah, good question. So someone is saying that their, G, their GPA for transfer admission is not yet at the 3.5, uh, but they're working on bumping that up. Yes, that's totally fine. Um, also with that, um, if we're speaking about transfers, uh, 3.5 isn't the cutoff. So it's like, hey, if this person doesn't have a 3.5, they're not admitted, right? It's just, it's a benchmark of, of us saying, hey, you know, you want to become a nurse, you're, you know, you're doing all these other sort of things, but just also want to make sure that you're spending that same amount of time, um, you know, at school as well. So uh, if you don't have it, continue working on these, on these courses to bump that up, and that's totally fine. Okay. Okay. So someone is saying other than volunteering at local hospitals, what other options do we have? Uh, what do we recommend? Um, and so, yeah, that's it. Besides kind of volunteering um, at a hospital, you can go to a clinic, a nursing home, you know, you can volunteer there. Uh, you can gain some type of healthcare license. Like I was saying earlier, EMT, LVN, CNA, other things that will help you immerse within the healthcare setting. So I would recommend doing that um, as well. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Someone is asking, what is the lowest GPA we accepted as a freshman? Oh, I don't, I, mm, good question. Don't really know it. Um, and so, I'll talk a little bit about that and why, right? Like, why don't you guys know that? Um, because if you ask me what's the highest, G, you know, freshman GPA you admitted, I wouldn't know that either. Um, because the GPA is, is just one of the small parts of admitting students into either program, to be honest. Um, because what you saw here, uh, what we really elaborated and talked about was what you're going to be putting in that supplemental application. Right, so it's really focusing on that statement of purpose, the lettuce recommendations, and the resume. We have a holistic review, um, right? So we have a holistic approach in terms of who we want to admit into, into the program. GPA is not the only you know, thing, it's not the end all be all. We really wanna look at you as a person, you know, why you have the passion in nursing, uh, what do you wanna do with your nursing um, degree, 
Uh, what do you want to do to impact your community, the people that you're surrounded by? So that's really what's actually more important to us um, than it is, hey, we just want to admit that person with the highest GPA. So um, sorry to answer is a little bit long-winded. Um, lowest GPA, highest GPA isn't our biggest concern. It's really making sure that we're going to admit the, the biggest you know, uh, and the brightest student. Okay, someone is asking, how do AP and honor classes weigh into the class curriculum? So yeah, if you have APs or, or honors that ends up being transferable into the university, uh, that is fine, um, but it doesn't, um, and the nursing program is different, right, than other majors. Um, just because you're transferring in coursework isn't gonna shorten the time of the program, right? So it doesn't mean, hey, I transferred in all these courses, so that means I can complete it in two or three years. Unfortunately, it does not work that with, with us. So you did see that that curriculum. And so basically all it means is if you've completed a, you know, like a psychology course, or a calculus course or English, um, it basically means that it's going to be opened up to an elective. So again, it would open up the opportunity if you enter as a freshman to, um, you know, minor in something else. So that's pretty much what it would do. Okay. Okay, so someone is asking uh, for transfers who choose not to minor, um, are they elective something that, um, that or, or sorry, for transfers who choose not to minor, um, are the electives that you take only the ones uh, that will be nursing courses? And so one thing is you have to maintain full-time status. Okay, so for financial aid reasons, scholarship reasons, things like that, you have to maintain um, full-time status. So um, you won't be able to just say, hey, I just wanna take the nursing courses and no electives. You most likely are gonna have to take electives to bump up you know, that minimum 12 unit requirement. Someone is asking for high, they're a high school senior and they're taking AP stats. Is that a prerequisite for the program? Um, so no, statistics is not a prerequisite for the program, um, uh, but you will be taking the statistics course, but it's biostatistics. So if you take AP stats, um, you can transfer that in, but it's not going to take away from having to take a math course. You're still going to have to take calculus and then biostats. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. So we'll go ahead and type in answers for these. These are a little bit more kind of personal questions, um, but let me do a new share and I'm going to open it up. I find it to Leone. Okay, here we go. All right, here you go. Hi everyone. My name is Leone. I am the Director of Financial Aid at the School of Nursing. Welcome to our information session. I'm so glad you have joined us. In this presentation, I will be sharing an overview of financial aid at the School of Nursing. And we'll be going over a few topics, starting with annual student fees, the cost of attendance, how to apply for financial aid, ways to fund your education, and important dates to keep in mind. Now let's begin with looking at annual student fees for your program. Annual fees are currently set at $14,132. If you are a non-resident, you will need to pay a supplemental tuition fee of $31,026. Fees are assessed quarterly so a resident student would pay about $4,710 in tuition and fees each quarter. Student fees include UC-wide and campus-based fees. You can find a specific breakdown of all the fee components on the annual and term student fees page on the registrar's website. Health insurance coverage is also mandatory for all students. Students are automatically enrolled in the UC SHIP health insurance plan, which has a fee of $2,785 per year. The UC SHIP health insurance requirements and fees can be waived if you already have adequate insurance coverage.
The cost of attendance, or COA for short, is an allowance based on educational expenses that students might incur. So this includes direct and indirect costs, and it's also the maximum amount of financial aid that students can receive during an enrollment period. Here you will see in the pie chart the different components of the cost of attendance. The total projected budget is currently $37,448. You'll see that the tuition and fees is just one portion of that. To begin the process of applying for financial aid, you will need to complete a financial aid application. To know which application to complete, you can reference the information in the table on the right. Most students complete the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA for short. You can apply at studentaid.gov if you are a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, eligible non-citizen, or a T visa holder. Students that are not eligible for federal aid can apply for state aid through the California DREAM Act application. You can apply at dream.csac.ca.gov if you are an undocumented student, have a valid or expired DACA, U visa holders, have temporary protected status, or meet the non-resident exemption requirements. The application opens up on October 1st of each year with a priority application deadline of March 2nd. You want to make sure to input our school code 001315 so that we can receive your financial aid application if you will be attending UCLA. The outcome of completing the financial aid application is that your expected family contribution is calculated and this determines your eligibility for financial aid. Now, you can fund your education in a combination of ways, through grants and scholarships, loans, and or work study. Grants or scholarships are gift aid that you won't have to pay back. And these include grants like the Federal Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, a Cal Grant, the Blue and Gold Opportunity Grant, the University Grant, and a UC SHIP Grant for your health insurance. Loans. Loan funding is borrowed money that you will need to pay back. And these include direct subsidized loans, the direct unsubsidized loan, a parent plus loan, dream loan for those that complete the California Dream Act application, and private loans. We also offer several work study programs. And participating in this, you earn uh, funding through employment. These programs include the federal work study program, the university work study program for Dream Act applicants, Jumpstart, America Reads, and various community service programs. Scholarship opportunities. So if you are a newly admitted student, you can complete the UCLA Prospective Undergraduate Scholarship Application. As a continuing student, you'll be able to complete the Financial Aid and Scholarships General Application for Continuing Students which usually has a priority consideration date of June 30th. So we always recommend applying by then. We also offer a region scholarship, and this is a renewable scholarship that is based on merit. And we offer a variety of School of Nursing scholarships beginning your junior and senior year. We also always recommend seeking outside scholarships and expanding your overall scholarship search beyond just what UCLA has to offer. Now, before we conclude today's presentation, I would like to highlight a few important dates. As previously mentioned, 
October 1st is when the financial aid applications open. You can begin filing your FAFSA or DREAM application as of October 1st. Now we start March 2nd because this is a big priority deadline. So make sure to apply for your financial aid by March 2nd. It's also the Cal Grant GPA verification priority deadline. So you want to make sure if you are Cal Grant eligible that your GPA verification form has been submitted. Usually between March and April, your provisional award letter becomes available, notifying you of your financial aid eligibility. And in May, the prospective scholarship application closes. Uh, if you missed the prospective, you can complete the continuing student application as well. You can find more information about financial aid on the website financialaid.ucla.edu or feel free to email me your specific questions at financialaid at sonnet.ucla.edu. Thanks so much for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Leonie, for that. I know she's not with us today, but still, thank you. And so um, what I'm actually going to do is let me just stop share. I'm going to stop share because next, um, which we're going to do is to, to end uh, today's information session, is we're going to have a student panel. I see one student is here with us. We should have another, um, but we will wait and see. Just give me a quick second. Let me check my email just to make sure he's all good to go. Let's see. Okay, so in the meantime, let's see here. I'm going to answer a couple Q and A questions, and then we'll we'll get started. Um, but let's see. So someone is saying, "What is the difference between work study and regular working?" Ah, good question. Um, and how does work study pay for tuition? So good question. So work study um, is a combination of students here at UCLA finding employment, but on the campus or on the university grounds. Okay, so they are paid through um, a department here. Um, on campus. So that's pretty much why it's called work study, right? So it's different from, say, let's say finding employment um, at uh, a fast food place that's outside of campus, right? Uh, that might be uh, considered regular employment. But let's say if we have a fast food place on campus, that could be considered work study. So it's just different in terms of its terminology. And so um, either way, the work study uh, tuition, or sorry, the work study money that you do receive can help pay for the tuition and or it can help pay for your living expenses. Aha, someone is asking a really good question here. How many applications do we receive for our nursing program? So again, we admit for, uh, sorry, well, yes, you guys know we admit for different um, programs for the freshmen and transfers. And so we also receive applications for different programs. So for our um, freshman admissions, um, we admit 50, right? So our goal is to bring in 50 uh, per year. Um, and uh, we receive uh, close to 6,000 applications. For transfer admission, um, our goal is to bring in about 20 plus. So this past year, we brought in about 20, actually I think 20 on the dot for transfers. And we had about 405 uh, students. Um, so it's a very competitive program each way. So, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move forward with the student panel. So it looks like we have the one and only Jisoo who's here. Uh, and so she's gonna have to take over um, hopefully Alex will be joining us because uh, he just emailed me. But so um, the floor is going to be yours on this. So what I always like to do is uh, start it off, um, introduce yourself, um, let us know what year you're in and if you entered as a freshman and as a transfer. And then um, we'll then follow that up with uh, why you want to apply to the program. Right, so okay, so name, what year you're in, if you were a freshman or transfer, and why you applied. Okay, hi, my name is Jisoo. Um, 
I'm currently a BSN four and I entered as a freshman. So, and then, uh, and then you asked, uh, the yeah, last question you, was why? Yeah, like why? Why do, why do I want to be a nurse? <laughs> oh, okay. So um, during high school, I interned at Kaiser and that was like my first step into like healthcare. And there I was exposed to a lot of different nurses and they just told me about like the variety in nursing and how there's just a lot of opportunities there in terms of like the ladder that you can climb and like different positions um, and different specialties that you can do. So that kind of led me to apply for nursing. Um, and that's why I chose nursing. But healthcare, just because like I love like patient care interaction and I always wanted to do something hands-on. So, yeah. Awesome. And Alex, right on time. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. Um, and so you've done this before, uh, but go ahead and just introduce yourself, uh, what year you are in the program, if you entered as a freshman or a transfer, just so the people out here uh, and attendees know. And then, um, you know, why did you apply? Why do you want to be a nurse? Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm a fourth year student. I'm from San Diego. Um, I'm a direct admit from freshman year. Um, I'm interested in ICU nursing, and I chose nursing because my whole family kind of came from a med medical background, and I was always told growing up, like, hey, Alex, like, you're going to be a great doctor one day. You're going to grow up to be a doctor just like your father, your grandfather, the whole lineage and everything, and so I kind of grew up thinking, like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a doctor, uh, and so in high school, I did all those science classes. I did, like, the internships. Um, I did research, and then... My senior year, I had a clinical internship in the hospital uh, in San Diego, and I was on the floor. I was there with the nurses, the doctors, everything. And when I was working there, I would spend my whole four or eight hour shifts there with the nurses the whole time. I'd maybe see the doctor for like five minutes when he'd come to a room and then leave. Um, and don't get me wrong, doctors are super important. They're amazing people, but their practice is just different. And I really, really liked being with the nurses the whole day and being with the patient the whole day. Um, and I really just saw that the difference in care was way more holistic. You were there not just to give meds, not just to do a procedure, but to sit at the bedside and just hold the hand of your patient and to talk to them. Um, and this is something I didn't even know was an option. And so when I looked into it more, I was like, wow, like nursing is something I can do. And it's something that doesn't require 15 more years of school. Um, and so that's that's kind of what sold me on nursing. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So I always like to do that quick introduction. And then what I want to do is open it up to those that are attending out here. If you have any questions uh, to ask Jisoo or Alex, please let me know. And I see one already. So uh, please feel free to keep putting those in the Q&A and we'll try to do our best to answer those. Um, so I guess the first one is uh, for Alex, actually. Uh, what was it about your application? You know what? It's both, right? We'll say both. Uh, so for both of you, what was it about your application that made you stand out? Um, and it's funny because you're going to be talking about, from your perspective, what made you stand out, right? Compared to like what the admissions team thought. So go ahead and, and both talk about that. I guess I can start. Um, well... I think maybe what would have made me stand out would be um, leadership in different clubs that I was a part of. Um, I think leadership is something that's really important, um, kind of shows your initiative and your drive. Um, obviously, I've had I had like a clinical internship in the hospital, but I know a lot of my fellow students didn't. So like, yes, that'd be helpful, but I don't think it's a requirement. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just show your passion in your essays. Really say why, um, because nursing is a hard job. It's it's not the glorified beautifulness. It's 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 difficult, um, and so you have to really show why and like have a reason for wanting to be a nurse. I definitely agree. Um, leadership experience, like whether that's like healthcare related or like something else, like just like giving back to the community. Um, like doing, getting involved in like your community, like whether it's serving. Um, I also think some healthcare experience or like exposure to healthcare is really important because when you are writing your application or when we wrote it, when I wrote it, 
there was like the separate part for why you wanted to do like nursing and so you kind of need to know what nursing is and like about like a little bit about healthcare and whether that's like getting exposure through like volunteering or an internship or even just like um you can reach out to like nurses and just kind of interview them and ask them about their experience too um and just like having that solid like what Alex said like a passion for healthcare and for like nursing is what I think um kind of stood out in my application awesome okay so it looks like there's another question here um what classes did you guys take in high school um so if you took any APs honors or IB um I definitely kind of went overboard I, I, uh, with like AP classes. Uh, I did like the AP bio, chem, physics, math. Um, uh, I definitely think AP bio and AP chemistry were super, super helpful. Although you still have to take them in college, having had the background in high school made the class way easier. Um, I don't know if it's required for admission to like, make you like a stronger candidate. I will say it will make your freshman year of college way, way easier, no matter where you go, no matter what you're taking. I also kind of overdid it with the APs. <laughs> uh, I took like AP Chem, Bio, Physics, um, AP Calc, and um, I did not take AP Psych, but I do recommend if you're like applying to this program, uh, because there are certain AP classes where you get credit and you don't have to take the class um, when you come to UCLA, which is really helpful because you have that like space to take a class that you might want to like just explore other things um or like just have that class time to like do something else so but yes I do definitely also recommend taking APs it helps with the course like what you're learning in the future like AP Chem definitely helped me for the Chem 14 series at UCLA so that's also my recommendation awesome okay and so we're going to kind of keep it on that kind of class level um in terms of the different classes you took someone's asking were you guys big science lovers so i know you guys took a bunch of ap's and so forth is that because you love science or was that like hey i just want to take it um because i know it's going to help me in the future um and so a little bit with that this person's just saying that they really have a passion in becoming a nurse um especially something that deals with sports medicine so was science heavily involved for you guys um I, I think I had really good teachers. I think I wasn't like super crazy passionate about um, science, but I think the teachers I had made it exciting for me. Um, I would say you don't have to be like, like a science geek and love everything about science to be a nurse. Um, you obviously have to take the classes, um, but there's a lot more to being a nurse than just science. So if that's something that's holding you back, um, I wouldn't make it like, that big of a factor for you? I actually really liked science in high school. So I applied to a couple of colleges like where they didn't have nursing as an option for chemistry. So I really liked AP chemistry, but I also agree like teachers kind of make the experience. So when I came to college, I kind of hated chemistry. So um, it's like a give or take. Like I don't think you have to really love science to do, you know, nursing because uh, Although there are science background classes and you have to have like that knowledge for certain things, it's not like a requirement to like love it. You know, you just have to learn it. Um, but if you're passionate about sports medicine, um, they also I know UCLA has the sports medicine program. So that's also something to look into, like the internship. Um, but yeah, you can lo love medicine and kind of not hate, but you can dislike science. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, I think this is a good question here. Uh, what was a fear that you overcame uh, while going through the nursing program? Or currently, because you guys are almost done. Uh, but is there any fears? Um, I think one of the biggest fears I had was um, like patient interaction. Um, I think as a volunteer there like in high school, it was always kind of more observing and not really doing everything. Um, and now when we're doing our clinicals that we start our junior year, you kind of have a knowledge where you can do something and interacting with patients with the expectation that sometimes you can't help was a little bit scary. Um, and obviously that very first clinical, that very first day in the hospital was like, my heart was beating out of my chest. I'm like, oh no, oh no. But, um, 
but you go to get comfortable with it. And maybe the second time you're still nervous, the third time you're a little bit less nervous. And the more you just expose yourself to that situation, the more comfortable you get. Um, and now I can maybe not perfectly enter a patient's room, but I can go there without being fearful um, because there's nothing to fear. It's your job and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, just adding on to that, like, I guess the fear that I overcame, like, we're, I'm currently in message C rotation. So it's like our last message rotation and communicating with other healthcare providers, like with the doctor and kind of asking them questions. Like you come in as a, like a student and you're like, oh, I, I feel like I'm not confident in my skills, but that's definitely a fear I overcame. Just like kind of advocating for your patient, even though you might not know everything, you know your patient and you know your patient's needs and just being able to advocate for your patient uh, was what I learned and the fear that I overcame talking to like other healthcare providers. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, what is the most shocking experience that you feel future students should be prepared for? Do you want to start on this one, GC? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Back to back 12 hours. <laughs> no, okay, it's not that bad once you get used to it. Uh, but like I said, right now, Metzger C, um, I think I'm the only only group right now in like the current people who are going to Metzger C rotations, but we have back to back 12 hour clinical shifts on Monday and Tuesday. So just kind of getting you, they like ease you into it though. It's not like they like tell you, oh, you're starting with two twelves. It's not like that. They'll like ease you into it. So it's not as bad, but that's just, that's like, I forgot what the question is. Uh, that's like something... the biggest fear. Yeah. Like the biggest fear for someone to kind of expect. Oh yeah. That was shocker, definitely like shocker. the most shocking experience yeah. was that, but they do ease you into it. And you just have to like have your routine like I have my routine for before I go to clinical and then my routine like to unwind after and so just having that um kind of helps you be prepared for that super quick I think most shocking for me is freshman year just coming to UCLA being a first year like college student is the amount of freedom you have I think it's super, super important when you go to college, there's a million different things you can be doing all at the same time. I think figuring out your priorities and time management is really important. This is regardless of whatever major you are, um, because it, it really is up to you um, how you want to lead your college experience. Um, so that was something I had to I had to figure out freshman year. Awesome. OK, what are you guys study routines, study habits? You guys have any? Study before. Cram studying does not work. Um, I like to study like like a couple of days before, just making the study guide and being able to review it. Um, for other classes like chemist, like chem or like life sciences, so biology here, uh, do practice questions. Um, sometimes like look for like resources and then go to like office hours, like with the professor or like review sessions or TA like review sessions like when they do the worksheets because they're actually really helpful and like TAs and learning assistants will like kind of guide you into what you need to study and I find that doing that in addition to studying in advance has helped me a lot. And one thing also the School of Nursing provides tutors for chemistry and biology and so I remember my freshman year like we'd get an email um, from the School of Nursing say hey we have tutors just for you guys if you need help come re like reach out um, and that was that was super helpful. Awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys talked about this, but uh, is there a specific like specialty or department you guys want to get into once you graduate? Um, so I have a minor right now in public health. And so I want to possibly get into public health nursing or I think Alex said critical care nursing. So also like ICU experience, just because like I really like that. A nurse to patient ratio just being not four or five patients mm -hmm. okay what about this because you guys have all been part of covid um has it affected your nursing experience i think and that could be like sorry sorry to interrupt like uh through your classes and your rotations i think it was definitely hard uh sophomore year because that's when we were fully online 
Um, so not seeing everything, everyone was difficult. Um, but we were lucky that we weren't affected so much during our clinical rotations. Uh, we've been able to have our clinicals just fine. We've been able to be in the hospital and work with uh, patients. Uh, we aren't allowed in COVID positive rooms, um, but that's not that many right now anyways. And so I think we've had the full nursing experience otherwise. Awesome. Um, okay. Do you guys have any regrets? That's, yeah, that's a good one. Any regrets? I think not nursing related, but like college related. I think it's very easy to say, oh, I'm busy. I need to study. I can't do X, Y, Z. Um, and there's a lot of clubs, a lot of like recreational sports, a lot of programs that you can join outside of school that are so much fun. Like UCLA has free kayaking for students at the marina. They've had it all four years and I've only gone for the first time this year. I love kayaking. I've only gone once. What? And there's like a salsa club that's like every Wednesday, you just meet in free salsa classes. I went once freshman year and I got busy. Um, I think I would definitely just like, it's really important to succeed, take your classes seriously, but you're only in college once. And I think it's really important to really have those fun experiences and learn a skill you never thought you'd learn or join a club you never thought of like joining. I agree. Like they have the enormous activities fair, like freshman year. And I remember like getting a lot of flyers for a lot of different clubs, but not really checking them out because I was like, oh, it doesn't like apply to like what I want to do in the future. But college is definitely like the time to like explore like everything, including like your interests, like salsa dancing or something like book clubs and stuff. Like honestly, just explore. That would be like my biggest regret because also COVID hit and then all the clubs move virtually and it's kind of hard to learn like certain skills like virtually or be like as present in those clubs but um that would definitely be my like biggest regret just not like not getting involved in like a lot of different interests and i think this kind of piggybacks with this next question could you talk about like school work what we'll say if you are working or whatever it is and social life so how is balancing that what are you guys doing stuff like that I definitely think it's manageable. Like I was saying before, um, finding your priorities and then ranking them in your time management schedule is super important. Um, I think I personally have done a good job of <laughs> managing social and uh, academic life, um, but I'm lucky where I don't have to work. Um, I know a lot of students who do work, have school and have a uh, social life, which is a little bit harder. Um, but I think if it's important to you, you will you have time to do it for sure. Mm, yeah, I I also I mean I'm not the best at balancing like the social life aspect, but school and work I can kind of talk about. Um, because during COVID I also worked like full time, and right now I have like a lab position, so I'm like working, but it's just about like scheduling, um, and kind of just organizing like prioritizing what you need to do, and. The biggest thing I learned um, when I was like balancing my school and work is just like making sure like I use my time wisely, which everyone always says, but like 30 minutes, like waking up 30 minutes earlier in the morning to just like go through all my tasks and like do the small things really helps. Like just use utilizing those small like in between time when I would have like gone on Instagram or like social media or something like that um, has really helped with my school and work life balance. I'm working on my social life balance this year. I'm really trying. Um, I guess what I've been doing is like trying to do something fun like every week, just trying to like meet someone or do something fun like once a week to kind of help with like stress and help with like balancing everything. That's awesome. Um, attending an info session for the student panel, right? Like, you know, doing different stuff. So that's also amazing. Um, okay. So a little pivot here, um, but someone is saying, uh, is there anything that you wish you'd done differently or wish you had known your senior year uh, that would prepare you for uh, college? This person saying the application process, but we'll just say, we'll, we'll keep more vague and say college. Is there anything you wish you would do differently or would have known? Um, I think 
for the application process, when you're writing your essays, definitely go over it with friends and family. Um, have second readers go over it um, and really make sure you're expressing what you want to express. Um, for college, I would say I definitely brought way too much stuff when I first moved in. <laughs> My dorm room was overflowing. I don't know how far away you live from college, but you can always get your stuff back. <laughs> but it, um, I think that's something that I kind of wasn't prepared for. Um, but I think um, there's not, you can't think about it too much. College is something that you learn along the way. Um, and it's obviously, it's very easy to like, kind of stress over what you need to do, what you need, not need to do, but everyone kind of finds their own path, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe GC can have a better answer than, than I do, but. Um, well, for the application process, I know that it's changed a lot um, since like I applied because there, I know like certain schools are not making like that SAT or ACT mandatory and stuff like that. So I, I don't really know, but I also agree just like your essays are quite important. Um, so just, you know, spending time with that. Don't do them last minute. Don't save them for like the week before, but do them like in advance. Um, and then I guess, um, I mean, something like going back, I mainly was involved in like my high school community and like everything I did kind of involved around that. But you can also find like opportunities in like your wider community, whether that's at like a local hospital, like a senior center or something like widening that and kind of broadening your opportunities um, might be kind of help helpful if you're like looking for ways to be more involved in the application process and things to like add. Um, for college, um, learn how to do laundry learn how to wash dishes and stuff um maybe like learn a couple of recipes like I know that seeing that summer before college starts is like more free because you don't really have any tasks to do um but that would be my recommendation kind of just like learn to be more independent because college college is definitely a lot about like being independent that's a good one uh let's see that's a good one I like that one I made you laugh um Oh, okay, this one's more to me. Okay, so since we only have a, probably a few more minutes, um, I always like to leave the last one as like, uh, is there one, maybe even a couple of things that you would want uh, the attendees to know? Um, and that's, hey, don't, you know, don't be afraid, apply. If it's do this, this will work, whatever it is. Do you guys have like a last scene message for them? You want to start GC? <laughs> I can start. Yeah. Um. I agree. Like, don't be afraid when you're applying. I applied to like so many different programs and so many different like colleges for different majors, and um, I because I didn't think I would get into LA for nursing for UCLA for nursing, but I mean, I did. I'm here. Um, my fourth year, almost done. So like, honestly, uh, don't be afraid to like apply. Like, even if you're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to get in. Just apply. Um, that goes the same for, like, anything. Just, like, apply, put yourself out there for your opportunities. And, like, don't be afraid to, like, step outside your comfort zone. Yeah, I guess kind of on that, you know, apply to everything. You know, you never know what's meant to be. Um, really just believe in yourself. You know, if you know that you did the best you can do, that's that's all you can. Um no matter where you go to school, no matter what you major in, uh, enjoy it. It's, you know, it's going to be the fastest four years. I, I can't believe we're seniors. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to be starting college because, I don't know, it gives me the shivers, you know, like what it would be to be a freshman again, have the dining hall food. Oh, the food here is so good. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, you guys are going to have a blast. Really live in the moment. Don't get too stressed about things. College life is all, all stressful, but find good friends, meet new people, and, and just, you know, have fun. Have fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. You know, I, I haven't thought about that because it's been pandemic. We've gone through the pandemic, or maybe we're selling it. Who knows? Um, but I forgot how great the, the cafeteria food is. It's like to the point where we shouldn't even call it a cafeteria. Like there has to be a better word for it because like a lot of people think cafeteria food isn't good. And that's just totally the opposite. Like 
our place to eat here are amazing. So yeah, let me, I'll throw that plug in there as well. Um, but just want to say thank you to both Jisoo and Alex. Um, I, I really do appreciate you guys taking, uh, you know, this time out of your busy schedule um, to speak to us. And so I really appreciate it. I know everyone who's attended appreciated it as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, feel free to take off. And I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes just answering some, some, some other questions. So thanks again. And we'll be seeing you guys soon. Bye. Okay, so someone is asking uh, for freshmen, do they stay on campus? And that is a really good question. Uh, so yes, uh, the university allows um, entering freshmen to stay for three years, uh, meaning that there's three years uh, of housing that's available. Um, and that's typically when the time where seniors will end up getting off campus housing. So yes, um, that happens. And if you come in as a transfer, yes, you still have the opportunity of also getting housing as well. Um, so great question. Um, I know I literally just talked about, you know, the, the places to eat. Uh, we call it up on the hill because it's pretty much its own village up there that has all the dorm rooms, places to eat, and so forth. So um, I think you guys would really enjoy that. So I'll take, spend the next couple of minutes. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to put those in the Q&A. Um, but if not, you guys can go ahead and take off. Uh, we're going to be ending a little early, and I want to do that to make sure that for those that are here on the West Coast, it's probably about dinner time for you all. Um, if you're in the Midwest or in the East, you guys probably already eaten dinner. Um, but if not, maybe you'd be having a late one. So again, I just want to say thank you guys uh, for joining. Um, and um, we'll go ahead and, and just kind of hang tight with that. Okay, I'm not seeing any come in and I'm seeing people start to log off. Ah, okay, good question. Yes, this recording will be available. This recording will actually be up tomorrow uh, morning. Um, and so we're gonna post it on our website tomorrow morning. It's gonna be the same uh, link to where you RSVP'd or that you're able to RSVP for today's session. So uh, it will be there. Okay, so someone is asking, when can I get the application? And so the supplemental application uh, should be available starting November 1st. Um, and that way, um, if you've already submitted your UC application, you would then be able to start the supplemental application. Um, and someone is asking, does the UC application factor into our, our decision? Uh, yes, it does. So we work together with the UC app. We do not review this, the UC application, uh, but we do work together with uh, Upper Campus. So both applications uh, go into effect. Someone's asking, are there, are there questions for the UC application that are the same for the supplemental? I do not believe so. Again, we don't look at the supplement, I'm sorry, we look at the supplemental application, we do not look at the UC. Um, so I don't think the questions will overlap, uh, but there will be an instance to where you will have to maybe reiterate yourself if you're gonna be writing you know, an answer uh, that is in the UC app that you also want to, you know, say in the supplemental, uh, I recommend doing that because we do not look at each other's applications. Um, let's see. Someone is asking, can you reapply for not accepted the first time? Yes, you can. You can definitely reapply. Hang tight for another minute because it looks like there was some questions coming in, so I'll hang tight.
All right, you guys are totally welcome. Um, thanks for joining me, uh, as well as my my dream team, uh, which was Natalie Asensio and Jamie Gama. Um, we are looking forward to hopefully seeing um, your applications uh, coming in, uh, but feel free to reach out to us if you guys have any questions. Um, we can set up a phone call, Zoom, or answer anything via email. Uh, but once again, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting, take care, and hope to see you all soon. Thank you.